What's up, guys? Ants Canada here. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Um, I just wanted to create this video because I know a lot of you, especially in North America and in Europe, are uh, experiencing some amazing ant nuptial flights now, and you're catching your own queens. And uh, I know a lot of you as well are writing in saying it's your first time, and you got a whole bunch of awesome questions about how to take care of your queens. Uh, what you can do to speed up the process of them finding, founding a colony, um, and all of that. And so this video is kind of going to be a uh, recap um, of how to take care of your queens. Um, you know, I've got several tutorials on this channel um, on uh, taking care of queens um, at the primary stages of colony founding. Uh, but I wanted to create this video to just kind of recap uh, and put all of that info in one video for all of you newcomers and uh, new, least, new subscribers to the Ants Canada Ant channel. Um, we've got over 4,000 subscribers now. This is totally awesome. Really, really cool. Um, so anyways, welcome all of you guys. Here in this basket, I've got some newly captured Solenopsis Geminata queens. Uh-oh. Where is she? Okay, well... This queen escaped. That's not good. <laughs> oh no, she got out. That's not good. Let's hope she doesn't have a colony. <laughs> These queens here in Philippines are pretty devious. They managed to escape test tube setups. In that case, if you're in the tropics and your ants are extra um, crafty, you've got MacGyver ants, uh, be sure to use extra cotton. So, okay. Here is the standard test tube setup, right? Um, when you capture your queens, uh, remember you can still capture them even though they have their wings on. However, you can't dig up a colony and catch the queens, catch the elites, um, because they're likely not mated. What happens is these queens fly in the air and the males follow them, they follow their pheromones and they mate in the air and on the ground, etc. And after they mate, the males die and then the females look for places to found their colonies, but sometimes the females keep their wings on. Uh, so you want to capture queens that you find outside, even though they have their wings on. Usually they'll break them off in the test tube. This queen here still has her wings. Got beautiful Solenopsis Geminata queen there. Now, uh, so what I've got is I've got a bunch of them in this little basket here, um, and I keep them warm. I don't place them in a room with air conditioning, um, especially because these are tropical ants. But for those of you in temperate regions, if you keep them in a room that's not air conditioned, that would be great. Um, a garage or something like that. Um, and what I used to do when I lived in Canada was I used to uh, block, like with tape and paper, um, the vents that you know, where the cold air for air conditioning came from so that the entire room was warm and I kept all my ants in that one room. Uh, so you guys can try that. Of course, you don't want to keep your test tubes uh, with the queens inside them in direct sunlight. You'll cook them for sure. They will die. Um, now, uh, people are like, okay, can I peek at them? Do they have to be in the light? Do they have to be? Well, what I recommend is that you keep your queens in the dark um, and you don't disturb them. And uh, here's why. It's when, the, when the colony is, you know, a substantial size, if they learn to like the dark, then you can easily use light as a deterrent when moving them from a test tube to a nest or from a nest to another nest. Uh, so you want to keep them uh, nice and in the dark, and you want to keep them undisturbed. Uh, some queens usually aren't so finicky about, you know, picking up the test tube and you looking at them, but... Um, the more undisturbed she is, the more uh, unlikely she is to eat her eggs, which can happen, especially with the more sensitive queens that, you know, really don't like to be disturbed during the founding process. I recommend that people keep them in the closet somewhere hidden or just away and just forget about them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Do your best uh, to keep them undisturbed. Uh, people are asking me, well, do you have to feed them at this stage? Well, if they are fully claustral ants, meaning if they're ants that during this funding process, the queens seal themselves off from the world and they, you know, raise their colony. No, you don't need to feed them at all. You could just leave them and they survive off the 
um, energy stores in their mesosoma, in their thorax, which used to house the muscles that powered their wings. And all of that is converted to energy, which they use to sustain themselves and to nourish their young um, when, the, when the eggs turn into larvae. Uh, so, uh, you don't need to feed them. Some people like to give them a little bit of energy after a little while. You know, um, when they start to look a little skinny, when their abdomens start to look smaller. You can add a little tiny drop of honey using a toothpick if you like. Um, some people like to add a cricket leg and all of that, but nature has given them all the tools to raise their colony on their own without any additional supplements. So you could just totally leave them alone. Um, other things to keep in mind uh, is that uh, the warmer you keep them, the faster the founding process happens. The, the quicker the nanitics, which are the first generation of ants, uh, the faster they come when they're kept warm. But you don't want to keep them hot. Um, you don't want to place this on a heating cable. And if you do, you just place the heating cable right there. You don't want to place it at all anywhere near the queen because you can definitely cook her. Um, and you don't want that. It usually takes most species, and I'm thinking of the standard um, species in North America it usually takes them around seven to uh, seven days to two weeks so one or two weeks before they start to lay eggs depending on the species um, you know Laceus neo Niger which are uh, flying everywhere in about a month uh, around the beginning of September they're called the Labor Day ant because on Labor Day in and around Labor Day they're always flying for their nuptial flight they don't lay eggs at all um, in the year that they're caught, they actually hibernate, and then the next uh, year they start laying and they start founding a colony. So I guess it depends when um, you catch the queens. Um, and so that's it. I hope this was a helpful tutorial, guys. Um, be sure to uh, check out antscanada.com. We have a new formicarium available. It's our Ants Canada Habitat Nest 3D, uh, which you saw in one of our videos. Uh, involving moving a mature colony into one of those uh, habitat nests. Um, and uh, they're 3D, they're basically a two-in-one. They're a, a nest and a, an outworld uh, all-in-one unit. So be sure to check that out um, at our store. And also, for those of you who are looking for queens and you're having troubles finding your own dl we have relaunched our GAN program, our Global Ant Nursery program that we launched maybe three years ago um, and we had to close it because uh, we kind of didn't have the manpower to control it because it was just this one big massive market and now uh, we have the manpower and the mechanics to relaunch the GAN program um, and it's basically to promote keeping local ants because Ants Canada is not for the keeping of exotic ants and ants not from your area because it's biologically unsafe as supported by myrmecologists uh, around the world. Uh, and basically what we do is we offer ants for adoption. Um, and we have select uh, recruits, um, GAN farmers, as we call them, uh, that sell ants to people in their area. So if you go to our site and click on the tab that says Queen Ants for Sale, and you look there, uh, you should be able to find a list of GAN farmers uh, all over the world. And if you find one in your city or in your area and, you know, you need queen ants, be sure to, to contact us and we can uh, hook you up with them. And uh, they'll be totally glad to sell you uh, a colony of theirs. And they're local ants caught from your area. So that's uh, kind of a cool thing. And for those of you who want to join the Ants Canada team and become one of our official Global Ant Nursery Farmers, uh, be sure to contact us as well. It's contact-us at antscanada.com and uh, join the Ants Canada family. Guess that's it, guys. Thanks so much for the support. Uh, we really appreciate everything and uh, good luck this year on your anting. For those of you who haven't found uh, DL8s yet in Europe and North America, don't worry. You still have time. You still have about two or two and a half, three months um, before it's kind of too late. I <laughs> uh, guess that's it, guys. Happy anting. And it's Canada signing out. Bye.